And I think so too. You mean the creative person? Yeah, because you're always looking for new, new uh, references. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yep. It's an important exhibition because it marks it marks uh, an event that I really don't look forward to, which is uh, my uh, my uh, retiring from teaching. I've been teaching uh, for 54 years at Brown, and I taught two or three years before at Yale. So I guess 57 or 58 years altogether. I'm happy to say that since his official retirement, and Walter and I just agreed that that's ridiculous. He's, he's not retired. <laughs> so <laughs> that Walter has remained involved, of course, in the visual arts at Brown. And let me say, along with everybody else here, uh, who has said it all along the evening. Um, you are a remarkable, truly remarkable human being, and we love you. Thank you. You are helping. Everything will be the same, except that I'll be working uh, more for my own things. But if any of the students want to complain or talk or whatever, they know that I'm around. I'm primarily a painter. And I think I'm a peasant. <laughs> or at least I have peasant taste. I was born in Lynn, Lynn, Massachusetts. We were married in 1950. And Barbara's birthday is, uh, is the day before, and I can't forget that. I don't want to make a speech so much as I want you to look at the paintings. I want you to feel what they have to say. And uh, they're not religious paintings. They're talking about fundamental things like peace and heart and hope. The water came rushing in, the skylight broke and we had uh, about 18 inches of water. And there was nothing you could do. Uh, the paintings had, they couldn't be salvaged themselves. They had to be changed. So may you all enjoy them and may you become richer for them. Thank you. showed some of the uh, reliquaries and a woman wrote me a most beautiful letter. She said she'd never been so moved by seeing those reliquaries, which of course were uh, monuments to the memory of all those people that were brutally murdered. You know? It's wonderful when you do something and it changes somebody. I thought, you've really touched on what it's about, that you've communicated you really communicated to another human being. I have always been interested in trying new kinds of materials. I recollect the first time I, uh, I learned how to do a woodcut, uh, somebody lent me the tools and gave me a piece of wood and uh, I started to work on it. And I felt so in love with it that when I looked down, my hand was bleeding uh, from all of the blisters that I had. I love the idea that I can make one object as a print or a book and many, many people can see it and experience it. So that's one of the great, I think, democratic things of printmaking or of making books.
my kind of book is that I make it all. I don't think that I want to be uh, uh, some modern artist who, who just have the idea and have somebody else make it. I, I think that through, the, through making it, there's a change and an understanding that you didn't have or I didn't have before. And that's what's exciting. And I suppose that's what uh, uh, suggests that I keep on working. When I went into the army, they said, well, with my background, I should, I should uh, be sent to a uh, map making school. So uh, I ended up in Oklahoma uh, learning to be an infantryman. I never did uh, I, I get to uh, go to map making school. I found myself in the 82nd Airborne and I was shipped to the European theater. They took us to a, a big wooded area and that was the Ardennes. And uh, the, the Germans had started that big push uh, there and they were sending us to, uh, to hold the line. And it was snowing and it was colder than hell. The uh, collages are referring to that experience. There's a lot of close combat, you know, close uh, fire, small fire. I hit the ground because I couldn't tell where it was coming from. I was looking around, looking around, looking around, and I looked up and I saw this orange explosion and I could tell something hit me in the small of the back like with a big clenched fist and uh, I couldn't walk. I, could, I knew I was, I had it. So by that time, it's a long story and I got home. It's the wall yet. was over, yeah. And I wanted to go back uh, to school. I, I wanted to, uh, to paint, you know, and, uh, and that was uh, a, a marvelous opportunity for me. My interest in music started when Temple Bethel first was, uh, was being constructed. So uh, that was the first three small mosaics to the entrance of the, uh, of the main synagogue itself, temple. And they're as nice today as when they were put in. But then I, I became uh, more concerned about all of the various factors in making mosaic. I applied and was accepted as a Fulbright scholar and I went to, uh, to Rome and I apprenticed myself to a, a mosaicista, a journeyman, a mosaic person. So when I came back, there was a, a question of the front plaza. They accepted the design and we laid the, the mosaics into the cement in time uh, for the opening of the building. Some years went by and uh, the chairman of the arts committee at the temple at that time asked if I would be inclined to make a vertical mural inside the temple. So we, we did finish that, uh, and that was a, uh, a really significant uh, feeling. These mosaics, as you are looking at it, face Jerusalem. And uh, that's, uh, that's part of the, the ritual of, uh, of, the, uh, of the temple, the remembrance of, uh, of the, uh, Jerusalem. So that's, that was my contribution. I remember what my mother said. Uh, remember, she said, it's nice to be nice. And I guess what she meant was, don't hurt other people's feelings uh, and, and you'll, you'll be repaid. And I think that was true in the army and, uh, and then uh, as a teacher. What is it that you want to change? To be an artist, you want to change something. You don't want to be an artist, you have to be an artist. You have to do those things. You must, there's no, there's no question about it. You are driven to be a real artist, you are driven to it. And uh, if you're not driven to it, uh, then you're a, a maker of sausages. <laughs>